Hello friends and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be painting this adorable golden retriever puppy. I first start off by using a simple palette of black and white to flesh out the eyes and making sure to capture those highlights and the dark areas of the eyes. I always find this to be a crucial part of my process. Once I'm happy with the eyes, I then try and move on to the nose. For puppies and portraits in particular, it's really important to focus on these areas as they're a really crucial part of the face and have a lot of detail to them. In order to create this puppy's gorgeous golden fur, I used a variety of colours. So in this particular instance, I used burnt umber, burnt sienna, raw sienna, yellow ochre, maples yellow and primary yellow. By mixing a variety of these colours, I was able to achieve the different colours I could see in my reference photo. I believe this is what really brings a painting to life when you use a variety of colours and not just darkening or lightening one colour such as yellow ochre to achieve this golden look. I think it's an aspect that really makes the painting come alive. Once I was relatively happy with the face, I mixed together a light yellow colour to cover the body of this little puppy. I then mixed together some yellow ochre tones to really tone the puppy and give it some definition as to where the shadows were. If you've been observing closely, you'll probably notice that I'm not just going in with the dark yellow ochre colour all over this puppy and that I'm actually working square by square. This is why I tend to use the gridding method as I like it as I'm able to judge the proportions correctly. So in this particular instance, I am working square by square to make sure that I'm getting those darks and lights in the right places. If proportions is something that you definitely struggle with, I definitely recommend gridding your reference photo and then gridding your piece of paper in order to achieve the right proportions for your painting. Once I was happy with the body, it was time to move on to the face. You often see in my paintings that I tend to put the base colours or where the groups of shadows are and then I'll take a break from that area, say the face and work on the body for a bit. Sometimes when you're painting, it's a lot easier to take a break from something you've been working on for a long time, whether that be working on a different part of your painting, just to give you a fresh perspective when you come back to it. So in this instance, I'm going back into the face and I'm just trying to better define where those first strands are, as I thought it was looking a little bit flat. For this particular puppy painting, I decided to go with a rich, almost burgundy red background. I chose this background as I thought it would really make this puppy stand out. As you can see, there's a really big contrast between the puppy and the background, which really makes him pop. Once the background is in, you'll see that I start to work on the edges of this puppy as I try to make him look a little bit more three-dimensional by adding the furs that are flicking away from his body. Once I was happy with the outer edges of this puppy, I started to up the contrast by working on deepening the shadows on this puppy's body. I then also start to work in the details of the puppy's paws in order to bring them to life and give them some real definition. I have to say this is one of my favourite paintings in my Little Puppy series. 
be sure to leave a comment down below if you've enjoyed watching this painting and be sure to check out the rest of my puppy videos in this series.